afternoon, tribe. We're here with Maya. She's a NICU expert and recently retired. So why don't you just introduce yourself, Maya? Hi, uh, my name is Maya. I'm living in Sacramento, California. Retired from the NICU about two and a half years ago. Uh, started in the NICU in 1976, so I had lots and lots of experience. But yeah, uh, one of one of the other things that was really fun was that in the process, I also did it part time, and I've been a school nurse and a mental health nurse and some other kinds of things, which actually worked really well um, in conjunction with being a NICU nurse. So um, it's a great field. Just absolutely loved it. Loved nursing. Excited about you guys. Uh-oh. Looks like we, oh, there you are. You froze for a second. Okay. Now you're back. All right, good. Okay. So um, after your retirement, you actually did a little bit of work still with nursing. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? You know, Chelsea, that was one of the most exciting things and challenging things I have ever done. Um, I returned about a month ago from a trip to Uganda where I went to teach a program that's sponsored by American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, it's called Helping Babies Breathe. And I was in a, a relatively large town um, that has a couple of programs of nursing and some hospitals mm -hmm. um, that was actually really, what I was focused on was um, very, very basic infant resuscitation. Okay. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated about the group that I was with was that we looked at what resources are there um, because it's not at all like NRP in this country because they don't usually have oxygen in the hospitals. And mm -hmm. for example, we would teach, um, you know, the basic stimulation, drying, doing that kind of thing. Um, but resources there are so limited. We actually didn't bother to teach. I don't, let me rephrase that. We did not teach chest compressions, oh, wow. um, which is, you know, yeah, it is. It's a very sobering thought. Um, and again, to be doing some basic resuscitation, realizing that you're only using room air, you're not even using oxygen is also pretty um, startling. But the, the people there are friendly and the nursing students and the medical students were so enthusiastic. And, and again, I, I just learned so much about myself and learned about the world and learned um, how excited people in different countries are to, in, in, to, in, to look for new ideas for what they're doing in their nursing practice. That's so great. And I love that you continue to give to the medical community even after your retirement. Uh, would you advise anybody who's looking to do volunteer work, get a certain amount of experience before they go hands-on into a volunteer opportunity in another country? You know, I think my first reaction is yes, but I think, Chelsea, it really depends on the person. Okay. Um, if I had not had the kind of experiences I've had in life and in being in other third world countries, um, I think it would have been absolutely overwhelming. Yeah. The, you know, to realize that you're really planting seeds. Mm. Um, you know, to see and, and to, to walk away from how things are going to be. Um, again, for example, in Uganda, one of their cultural things is that they swaddle the babies and cover the babies. And so we would go into like the postpartum unit and you see a mother in some in very nice weather, like 70 degrees, but she is under like three or four blankets and under those three or four blankets are her baby is her mm. baby. And then you pull that back and you realize that baby is still swaddled and that baby in our country would be so much in danger. We consider just a suffocation risk. Yeah. But you can't really address that. You really have to go through the nurses and you have to be willing to let go of things um, and just embrace the people and embrace what you're doing. So I think a lot depends on what kind of life experiences a person has, um, sure. but it's not for the it's not for the faint hearted. Sure. You know, you've really got to be willing to um, roll with the punches. Sometimes in the classes we would have 40 or 50 people and the next class we would have maybe three or four. So, you know, it's just a, a flexible, you know, go and, and, you know, take your preconceived idea. Did he, I, let me rephrase that. Re preconceived ideas and leave them at home. Yeah. Yeah. But it, 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 it's amazing. It's just an absolutely amazing experience. Well, that's great. Um, so we've got several viewers. Those of you that are tuning in, if you have questions, please put them in the comments. And as we're discussing her role as a NICU nurse, I will address them as they fit in our conversation. Okay. So I welcome you guys. Thanks for being here. So Maya, when so you, 
it, you went to you went to school and started nursing in seventy six. Is when you first became a nurse. <laughs> I know. I look at you guys. It's like, oh my gosh. Yes, um, I actually uh, graduated from um, a bachelor's program in nineteen seventy four, and wow. my first job was in mental health um, here in the state of California. They had just closed the state hospitals, so mm -hmm. I was doing essentially mass. Um, kind of like a, uh, I guess I would have to call it case management. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't call it that at the time. Um, but then I realized that I really kind of wanted some acute care experience. So I went to work at um, the university hospital here. And the NICU was really, as a field, was just really getting started. Okay. Um, you know, so that's been one of the things that's been fun is to see the evolution of the field. Yeah. So you stayed in the NICU for how long total? Um, actually, um, I would say kind of total experience is probably a, a sum total of about 30 years. Um, okay. Because like I said, I, I was a school nurse at a high school for about 15 years. Um, but that gave me the flexibility of coming back and working during the summers and working sure. during the holiday. And so that was really a nice mix of being in the community and then having the acute care experience. And it was really beneficial um, in both fields, because in the school, I would see special needs students, you okay. know, some of whom had um, been in intensive care or had had long term hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. And then when I would go back into the NICU, I could really talk about what it looked like in the community. Yeah. So do you feel like the NICU as a whole is a good place for a new grad to start? I think, again, it depends on the on the person. I would say yes. I have never done med surge nursing. Mm -hmm. um, and in retrospect, I've, I have to laugh because I've told people, I don't know, Chelsea, how I got into nursing because I don't like to be around sick people. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Um, but in the NICU, you know, it's very different. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, when, when a baby spits up, it's a little tiny spit up. Sure. You know, or if you're changing a, a, you know, a diaper, it's a little tiny diaper. Sure. Um, but I still, I think so. It really depends on um, the nurse. But I would also say I think that things have gotten so specialized that I, I think that the old idea that we used to have of really needing the uh, med surge background, I don't know that I think that that's necessarily true anymore. I agree. I agree. Um, when you guys received new grads or transfers, uh, transfer nurses into your NICU, what was the training process like? Back in the day, <laughs> um, there really maybe wasn't any. Currently, maybe. Yeah. Um, and so that's been, again, something that's been really nice to see. Um, I will tell you that the hospital that I worked at most recently almost never hired new grads. It's probably been about 15 years since they hired new graduates. But here in California, in California, Chelsea, we don't have a nursing shortage. Um, we have, like, I think, four or five schools of nursing just in this area. And so the employer that I worked for has such good salaries and such good working conditions that we literally have travelers coming in um, who live out of state and come back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. When we have had and the other ones that I've seen, we've had a clinical nurse specialist who really spent, um, I think usually it was about six weeks of didactic and okay. then another good month, a month's worth of having a one-on-one -on -one preceptor. Okay. So that's pretty, pretty much been it. But there's usually a solid uh, didactic that goes with it. Okay. And so... You know, there's the micro preemies, there's the standard preemies, et cetera. Did you guys break <laughs> it up to where you got comfortable with that feeder grower and then you got comfortable with that standard premature, whatever classification you would call that? How did that work? Um, usually what happened was kind of starting out with grower feeders. Okay. Uh-oh, she's frozen. Hmm. Well, shoot. I wonder if she accidentally disconnected or if her internet just got choppy. There you are, uh, Maya. Okay. You broke up uh, um, right after you said it starts out with feeder growers and then it cut you off. Oh no. Okay. So just a second, guys, I can get her to come back. 
Um, just one moment. I will let her know she can just re rejoin. Hopefully she'll be back shortly. So guys, if you have any questions specifically about NICU, please get them in the comments. Um, I'll be asking just general NICU based questions that I would be curious about if I was a new nurse going in, but um, don't be shy. Go ahead and get your questions in if you have anything specific that you'd like to know from Maya. She's got so much experience and we can really learn from her. Um, she just read my message to go ahead and click the link again to come back to us. So hopefully she'll do that. Um, those of you that are viewing, are you all NICU nurses or looking at getting into the NICU? Any of you wanna chime in? Well, it looks like she's not coming back. What a bummer. I wonder if her internet is just not working. I know she's in California. The weather is beautiful today from what she said previous to connecting. Shoot. All right, well, technical difficulties are never fun. This is our second week in a row to have technical difficulties. It's a bummer. Um, so Maya got disconnected. You're a NICU RN level three for the past five years. That's awesome. Welcome. I'm so glad you're tuning in. Do you have something you absolutely love about NICU in your last five years? Something you've really enjoyed? You want to get into NICU? That's great. Um, when I was in the float pool, I was in the pediatric float pool and I chose to have NICU as part of it. And I was there enough that they decided they wanted me to start taking the micro preemies. And I was like, oh, no, mm -mm. I don't think I want to do that. That's that's just uncharted territory. I, I didn't feel comfortable enough to start doing that. Um, and they they were OK with that. I didn't feel like I was there enough. I would be in NICU one day and pick you one day and peds one day. So um thankfully, they abided by my desire not to take the micro preemies. But uh, do you enjoy the micro peonies, those of you that have experience? For whatever reason, they just scared me. I felt like if I looked at them wrong, they were going to desat and decompensate. <clears throat> Bummer. I don't know why she's not just clicking back in. Um, sorry guys, thank you for your patience. She says she's coming back. There she is, don't leave. Okay, Maya, we're still live. Okay. Oh, there she went again. Bummer, you love the micro preemies, my favorite patients. Um, yes, but you know what? If I had been a NICU nurse, obviously, then that would be a different ball game, but I'm not. So I, I, I'm a picky nurse by trade. I that's that's my jam. So hopefully, um, yeah, those of you that are interested in NICU will be able to just float there and get a feel for it. If that's an option for you, I, I really loved that opportunity. And I realized that, you know, I would stay in the picky. All right. So Maya's not able to come back. She keeps trying and it's not working. So um, I guess I'll end our Q&A since her Internet isn't working and maybe we can reconnect. I'm so sad because there were so many of you interested in this. So um, I'm not sure the next steps, but hopefully we can get her back on the schedule so that you guys can get your questions answered and hear more from her. So thank you so much for attending. And I'm sorry. Thanks, Tribe. Beautiful. Hi, Tribe. We're going to try this again. Sorry to those of you who um, we lost connection with. We're talking to Maya about her experience in the NICU. So we were talking about orientation. So you were saying that you start with feeder growers, master that, and move on. What does that progression of orientation look like? Um, the thing that I liked about starting with the grower feeders is that it was less threatening. Mm -hmm. um, and it also, I think, really speaks a lot to time management. Oh, um, yeah. the NIC, the NICU works so differently than other areas because feedings are at a prescribed time. There's pretty much a, um, you know, a, a rhythm as it were. And then there's also becoming comfortable with the parents. 
Mm-hmm. So, and, and really learning how to handle the babies. Um, there's so much multitasking that goes on that I really found that um, people who started feeling comfortable with the feeder growers then moved to more intermediate babies, really started having a chance to um, assimilate the, the stuff they were learning in the, their didactic portion with what was really happening in the real world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, I think it, it just kind of gives you a chance to, to really overcome the fear of handling a really small infant. Sure. Um, they're stronger than they look, but but they're but they they can be very intimidating. Um, and then to move into the more critical care areas where there is so much to manage in terms of, um, you know how how critical is it? How things can change? What the equipment is like? Mm-hmm. Um, what I will say, Chelsea, is that in the time that I when I started in the NICU, we started all in one room, and so a lot of my learning occurred because I I observed what you were doing. And now that model has changed. And I think it's a little bit different for some of the newer nurses. Um, The other part, I think that going forward with it, that makes it a little bit more tricky is that your ability to really connect with a coworker is is very different than it was again, back in the day. Um, And you really have to rely, you know, if it's you and me in a um, one pod, you and I are, are relying on each other uh, for the life and death of a baby if something happens quickly. So there's a lot of transition that goes on, um, but a lot of it's also a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. So being in the NICU for 30 years, what would you say your biggest change that you were of witness to? What was the biggest thing that you saw? Um, you know, the, the thing that I love is that we have more technology but things got less invasive. Hmm. Um, The biggest single difference that I saw was the use of pulse oximetry. Wow. Absolutely, absolutely revolutionized the whole thing. Um, Again, we had no way of monitoring what was happening with the baby until, I mean, we literally would stand there and go, I don't know, you think he looks a little blue? Well, I think he looks a little blue. Well, I don't know. And then you'd wait until their heart rate actually started to drop. And now now we can really move on that so much faster and intervene. And the other thing too, that I love to see is again, this evolution and this willingness in the field to, to learn from past mistakes and to embrace new things. So for example, um, with the the very, very small micro preemies, it's so much more now a hands off kind of of situation. Um, We used to literally have to suction every hour because their tubes would clog. Now it's, we're not going to move them unless we absolutely have to. We're not going to change things. We're not going to be doing something just for the sake of doing it. And Mm -hmm. so it's really a kinder, gentler, you know, environment. Um, And that those two things, but the pulse oximetry absolutely um, has, was was just this huge significant difference in, in, with the babies. Absolutely. That is amazing to think of nursing without pulse ox. <laughs> I just can't oh, I fathom. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, in, and again, uh, on my trip to Uganda, one of the hospitals that I was working at did have um, a, what we would call a special care unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they're, um, they did have access to incubators and things like that, but they didn't have the babies on monitors. But the things that we see here that work that actually started working in third world countries was skin to skin and breastfeeding. Yeah. You know, so there's that, that stuff that's going on. And so that was really uh, fun to see in Uganda of seeing this thing that was, again, this, the parents there, but it's a very quiet environment. And again, so for so many years, we had all the lights on all the time. You know, we didn't do positioning. We didn't think about things, but then again, we didn't know any better. Yeah. You know, so that kind of stuff, I think, has, has really changed. But I also have to tell you, the heart and soul of the NICU is still the same. You know, that that relationship that you get with the babies and the families is still there. Yeah, absolutely. What's the youngest child you've seen survive um, in your 30 years at the NICU? Um, I think the youngest gestationally would probably have been about 23 weeks. OK, Um the, again, the issue with that that people have asked me a lot had been about, um, and, and the issue of survival, that um, people have asked me in the past, don't you feel bad about the babies who die? And quite honestly, Chelsea, I've had to say that a lot of times I felt a lot worse about the babies who've lived. Um, you know, the of what's happening with the families and what's happening with that child has often been 
um, so difficult. And then a lot of times, especially because of the technology and what's happening with some of the families, the, the issue of even doing resuscitations has been trying to come up to grips with, are you doing this for the baby or are you doing this for the family? Sure. Um, you know, but again, um, to, to, I, I kind of get to keep saying back in the day, but I do remember when, it, when the, the survival of a 28 week gestation baby was just uh, unheard of. Mm-hmm. And now we fully expect those 28 week gestation babies to survive and do well. That's amazing, isn't it? That's just, you know it is. It just it just blows me away. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. Um, someone commented, "Yay, NICU," and another one said, uh, "Twenty three point six. It was the it was the oldest that she'd seen." Yeah, it's it's right in there. It's just yeah. right in there, and and it's it's hard. It's 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 hard, and it's hard for the babies. But it's yeah, and we kind of keep pushing those limits for better or for worse. Right. I, I hear what you're saying in that fine line of, you know, what's the what's the purpose in, in our motives, I guess, and in our actions. We would get those NICU grads, trach, vented kiddos um, yeah. up into the PICU when the NICU was like, OK, they're no longer NICU babies. We need to move them they're out. No longer NICU babies. Right. And so when the PICU got them it would really tug at my heartstrings. Like, what are we doing here? You know? And I think, how did you, as someone who dealt with this for 30 years, how did you deal with those stressful situations and how did you cope or decompress after your shifts? You know, it, between the stress of that and the hours that we work, Mm -hmm. um, I worked night shift for a while and it was very, very difficult for me. Yeah. Um, I will share with you that I, um, had, have had some serious problems in the past with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been recovering now for 12 years, but that did contribute significantly. It it contributed significantly because I didn't have anything to cope with. And since then, a lot of it has been working with the families and, um, learning, you know, literally to, to accept the things I can't change or to realize that, that I'm there to support the family, regardless of whether or not I support their decision. Sure. Um, you know, I will also tell you that some of the most profound moments though I've had in my life have been directly related to that. Um, a baby I took care of for about seven months, knowing pretty much the whole time she was not going to survive. Hmm. But the but the the bond that I made with her family and the things that I learned about myself and herself and the um, you know, the the fun things and, and a lot of the, there are three or four families that I continue to stay in touch with. Um, and so, you know, that, that, you know, and I think you kind of do that sometimes in the pick you too, Yeah. but to kind of, you know, I also realized that on there've been once in a while with a baby that I've had to, to go in and say, I I can't take this. I can't take this assignment. This is just not going to work for me right now. Or to say, I need a break from this assignment for a while. Sure. Um, you know, that's good for all of us. There's just sometimes that assignment that just just hits you in the wrong place. And that's okay for you to speak up and tell your charge like, hey, tomorrow when I come on shift, I would really prefer to have a different assignment, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the learning to set those boundaries or to learning that, um, you know, we put on our superhero cape and walk in, um, but you pay a price for that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but on the other hand, like I said, um, to be able to move through things with the family. I do kind of have to give a little bit of a proviso in saying that the hospital system that I work with, Chelsea, um, relatively recently um, started working with more Medicaid patients um, because for a number of years we had, um, you know, it's a, it's a, um, I work for Kaiser and it's a health insurance, you know, um, organization that has worked with, um, Middle class, highly employed families. Okay, and so a lot of the social issues that I saw working in in other places were not nearly as profound. Okay, and so when those things started to change, um, my hospital was not necessarily equipped to deal with that for a while, and okay. that you know puts its own another spin on things. Of so now we have this happening with the baby, but I never see the parents. Mm-hmm. You know, or the parents come in, you know, once in a while and, and they're not happy and they have their own issues, but I'm the one who's been taking care of the baby and whose baby is it? And a lot of those things are really, you know, pretty difficult. And so trying to find a way, you know, to, to move through that and provide the best care that we can. 
Um, I will tell you, I've also had the experience in talking with somebody lately that I would really like to see some of the hospital systems address is a bereavement leave for yeah. nurses when a, somebody that you've taken care of for months and months and months has died. Hmm. And then you expect, and you know, you, the hospital system expects me to come in for the next shift, but I'm not necessarily equipped to, 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 to do my grieving that way. Sure. And I, I, you know, I think that some of that, I think, will, you know, are things that we have to look at and the issue of compassion fatigue. Yeah, great input, but, you know, for sure. Yeah. We've got several yeah. questions coming in. Uh, Delora okay. asks, I'm a micro mom. Do moms who've been in there with their babies do well being nurses at, at, in the NICU? How do you feel about that? You know, the surprising number of my coworkers who got into the field because they'd been the mom of a preemie. Yeah. You know, and they've, they've done well. And the one thing that I love with that is they can relate to a parent in a way that I absolutely can't, no matter mm -hmm. how hard I try. So, yeah, if that, you know, if I think for, uh, for somebody who's looking at that and you feel the draw, I'd say go for it. It, it just has been a great thing to see. Absolutely. And Delora, I would, I would, you know, put it to you this way, like, just like Maya said, you're going to connect with that parent just on a totally different level. Because I mean, I yeah. can say, oh, I understand that you're sad, but you really understand that they're sad. Like, I can't hold my baby. I never experienced that. So as much as I can kind of put myself in their shoes, it's not the same. You will be able to have those words that are just so precious that they will just need to hear exactly what you have to say. I could see you being moving mountains for those parents. Okay, next question. There's several coming in. Um, Dee Dee said, thank you for being so brave. Uh, any advice for a newer nurse who wants to get into the NICU? It's tough to get into the NICU at my hospital. They want experience. I want to be proactive. Do you have any volunteers like cuddlers? Uh, we do have volunteer cuddlers. Okay. Um, I think that it's probably a, it, it certainly um, speaks well during an interview into a manager that somebody has the passion to come in and really learn to love the babies and yeah. to see how things go. It, it, it can't hurt. Um, I would also say, um, suggest looking at some things online. There's some great online courses, it, you know, through the continuing ed stuff that are not very expensive that will also give, I think, a little bit more information about um, the technical stuff, you know, what the labs look like, what the care looks like, what's expected. Mm -hmm. um, it is a hard field to get into without some experience, but how are you going to get the experience and things like that? But definitely, I think that, yeah, you know, um, I'm honestly, I'm not wanting to go back as the cuddler because I think I would probably try to interfere too much with what the nurses are doing. Yes. Um, but, but other than that, I think it'd be a great way to start. So I have a question for you then. If a lot of, you said that your current or the hospital you just retired from is not hiring new grads, where would you suggest a new grad whose end goal is NICU? Where would you suggest that they start? Um, gosh. <laughs> Labor and delivery would be okay. a good place um, because doing the one of the things that my hospital has done and a lot of the hospitals do is to have NRP nurses mm -hmm. involved in the resuscitations. Um, you also start to get to see high risk deliveries. You get to work with moms. You get handling the, the, the normal baby. Um, I'm a big believer in the more normal deliveries you go to. When you see one that's not normal, you know it right away. You don't even really have to be taught. It's just like, oh, okay, this baby looks like they're in trouble. So that would be definitely a possibility. Um, postpartum, uh, you know, and, and peds, any of those I think would be great. Great input. All right. So we've got another DD asked, what's your nurse to patient ratio? Oh, my gosh. I <laughs> I have to laugh. Yeah, I I, I it's, let me rephrase this. Through your, many, many years of working and being willing to go out on strike and having a very politically active um, state nurses association in the NICU and where I work, uh, we have very specific ratios in for um, an NIC for a, a critical care baby. It's one to one, sometimes maybe two to one. Um, she's for, in, she's um, in California, guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. California, we're, we're our own. It's our own whole whole different game. Yeah. Um, 
in in an intermediate um, area, it is one nurse to three babies, and that's it. And it is by law, and it is by our contract, and we are spoiled. And they get, but we work hard to get to the minute. Yes, yes. But I will, I will say we worked hard to get that too. Absolutely. And again, you said you don't have a nursing shortage. That speaks to the way that your state is running nurses. Um, we don't have a nursing shortage. And the hospital system I work for is a profit-making organization. Ah, that too. Yeah, Nothing it can be done. With that. They take yeah, care no, of their it, it, Yeah, it can be done. Yes. Okay. So, um, Kate says, Maya, one of my beloved mentors. So you're still influencing people. <laughs> and Tammy said, we get so protective of our tiny humans. It can be so hard when we have to deal with the parents who treat their babies as afterthoughts. You know, it is. And one of the things I will say for people is that, um, I finally realized that what families are, what what's happening with the families, if I frame it in the, the realization that they're afraid, that mm -hmm. underlying all of that anger or that apathy or whatever is a fear. That's a good point. Uh, Delora, I just wanted to thank you for your input about um, a micro preemie mama coming into the uh, field. Oh, good. Yeah, um, Marie asks, should one start in L&D or mother baby before going to NICU? She's currently in step down, uh, adult step down. Do you feel like she could transition into the NICU well from adult step down? Again, I think it, I, I know nurses who have. Yeah. Um, if the hospital provide the right preceptorship, um, and the right training, absolutely. Because again, if you've got kind of the idea of some critical care things, the things that you're looking at overall, I think it definitely can be done. Um, but a lot of it, again, I think depends on, are we talking moving into a level two? Um, are we talking, you know, moving into more of an intermediate kind of situation? I guess I would ask some questions. And with regards to the mother baby or labor and delivery, it's whichever you could get into. Labor and delivery, though, is probably more difficult to get into the mother baby. Mm. I feel like just from an outsider looking in, I feel like labor and delivery would help you mentally transition better to NICU. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, again, because you see you see brand newborns and stuff like that. And you also have to learn a lot of critical care things because your moms can go bad pretty quickly. You know, mm -hmm. there there is a Oh, she's frozen again. No. You're back. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, so many questions. Everybody wants to ask questions now. It's beautiful. All right. So, um, and we've been on for 30 minutes. So if you need to go, I respect that. Are you okay continuing past our 30 minutes? I'm retired. <laughs> Good. Okay, so um, let's see. Courtney said, thank you so much for your information and your time. I love hearing your experiences. Um, Kayla said, I just got accepted my first position in a level three NICU. Do you have any suggestions for me as I start my dream career? Oh, I'm so excited for you. Yes. <laughs> um, it's, um, again, the willingness to learn, the willingness to learn from families. Um, and, you know, a lot of times just be willing to take some deep breaths, um, take it in a little tight, you know, the literal one day at a time kind of thing. It, it's welcome to the field. I'm, I'm excited. Um, a lot of it is if, if somebody's got some pretty good time management skills, they'll be, they'll do a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you do have to either just step out and cry or giggle or, you know, do all of those things. And NICU nurses were kind of famous for our potlucks. <laughs> That's awesome. Kayla, congratulations on your new position. That's so exciting. All right. So we our questions have died down. I think we got all of them. If any of you have any okay. other questions, quickly get them in. I'm going to ask her one last question from my own. And then if you guys have any other questions, get them in before we end. What would you say the most rewarding and then the most challenging things about being a NICU nurse for 30 years? Chelsea, I was lucky enough that things evolved. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that my, the biggest takeaway in the whole thing is that 
you the most joy can bring you the most pain. Mm -hmm. Um, but being able to share this life and literally the birth and death experiences of with families is such a privilege. There's just no other way of putting it. And to have that sense more than once that, and I, I can tell you when I'm, I'm thinking of the very specifically of standing at a baby's bed and knowing without a doubt that I'm doing what the universe wants me to do. Mm-hmm. And I can look back on my career and know that I have really made a difference in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And when we're nurses, we forget that not everybody can say that. Mm -hmm. And that privilege, like I said, of sharing these very intimate moments with families. Um, I wish I could tell you some of the crazy things we did before we had 24 hour visits uh, (laughs) of, of silly things that we did with respiratory equipment and IV equipment that, you know, today would get you fired and probably make you lose your license as well. Um, but you know, it's, it just is amazing. And to be at those, um, you know, you walk into a normal delivery and you see this, this brand new life and they're all different and you don't know what you're going to get. And it's exciting and it's challenging. Um, you know, and, and the issues I'm, I'm pleased to see, I think now with younger nurses is that we are addressing things like needed breaks, right? And, you know, getting salaries and, and some benefits and things that are, are worth what you're doing. Um, you know, but overall, like I said, I mean, I think of the times that I cried over babies and the times we laughed over these silly things and, um, you know, just being willing to to learn is is just so exciting. I, I just just get so excited for for younger nurses and for newer people in the field, you know, because it it just really is amazing. And I'm so glad you guys are all here. Yes, it's super exciting. Marissa said, "I will be graduating in December and plan to pursue a career in NICU. I'm worried that I'll have a hard time finding a job since I have no experience. Do you think that shadowing at different hospitals would be beneficial?" Um, if they will allow it, absolutely. Um, a friend of mine um, got her job because she volunteered at the hospital. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, there aren't, for all of the hospitals we have here, she went in and she volunteered in certain areas, you know, and then then she heard things and she um, made connections. And that definitely, you know, I would definitely say shadowing. And maybe you get in there and you find out this isn't for you after all. And that's valuable. And Marissa, I will suggest to you too, you can do cuddling. If if you really think that NICU is where you want to be, you can do cuddling. Uh, I think almost every hospital I've ever walked in um, as a traveler and as a staff nurse, we all had cuddlers. So maybe pursue that if job shadowing isn't an option. Sometimes they won't let you job shadow unless you actually have an interview. So just keep that yeah, in mind. I agree. And yeah, then, um, that's true. If you don't want to cuddle, they have child life volunteers that go around and, you know, deliver toys to older infants um, and things like that, where maybe there's a child life department that you could volunteer in and get some exposure that way. Great advice. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? I am so glad we reconnected. I am too. This is great fun. This has been so enlightening and we've had so much interaction and lots of interest. And I absolutely love that. Would you be okay if people ask you questions? uh, Because this will be available on replay. If they continue to ask you questions, are you okay with that? And I can just let you know that they that they have some questions for you. Absolutely. Great. That is so wonderful. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, let's see, Marissa says, thank you so much. So great fun. Thank you. you and thank you for your 30 years of NICU service. How long have you been a nurse in total? Oh my gosh, let's see, 1974. <laughs> I, I that's too much math for me at the moment, but a lot of years. That's phenomenal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for not saying, oh my God, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Have a Thanks wonderful a lot, day, Jeff. tribe. Enjoy your afternoon. I hope the weather's beautiful as it is here. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Maya. Okay. Bye-bye.